Hello and welcome to Designing Impactful Innovation. I'm your host, Clara, and today we're talking about trends and challenges in cloud and SaaS solutions with two Dassault Systems experts, Vincent Frerbeau, Vice President of Online Store and Cloud Adoption, and Sébastien West, Worldwide Value Engagement Cloud and Infrastructure Director. Hello, Vincent and Sébastien. Welcome to the podcast. Hello. Hello. Thank you for joining us today. Before we begin, could you please introduce yourselves uh, for our listeners? Sure. On my side, I'm Vincent Frerbeau, and I'm in charge of what we call the online store of Dassault System, capacity for client to buy online and cloud adoption, which means how do our clients adopt our solution on the cloud? And I'm Sébastien Vest, Worldwide Value Engagement, Cloud and Infrastructure Director. Happy to be with you, Vincent, today. On my side, my mission, the mission from my team is to support large engagement on cloud, and especially for very large customers. All right. So to start off, can you please tell us what is the difference between cloud and SaaS or software as a service? Okay. So I want to start. So cloud computing and software as a service are related concepts, but they refer to different aspects of technology. To simplify, cloud computing is the adoption of three layers, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service and software as a service. The most common way to move to cloud for our customer is to use infrastructure as a service. Thanks to cloud providers, it's very easy to deploy servers in many locations over the world. On this layer, it's still under the customer responsibility to manage very low level components like operating system, database, network, configuration, and to pay each time their usage of this component. At the opposite, on a full SaaS approach, all the responsibilities are fully covered by the SaaS provider. And at the end, for the customer, the main benefit is always up to date, always on, everywhere, without any high level IT complexity. So I wanted to summarize the fact that from my point of view, the SaaS is the real target of every move to cloud approach. So for Dassault System, cloud is synonym of software as a service, and it's allowed to deliver more to our customer more quickly. I agree with you, uh, Sebastian. If I'm looking at it client perspective, client point of view, I would say that they don't see the software editor in the same way. If it's cloud, they see it as a supplier, as a provider of services. It could be infrastructure as a service, indeed, as you said. Whereas if they buy something on SaaS, the software as a service, the software editor becomes a partner. The software editor has to take care of everything. So all the burden, all the difficulties from an IS standpoint relies on the software editor. So it's very strong relationship that at Dassault System we, we have to establish with our clients when they choose to subscribe to our software as a service. Uh, yeah, it's a clear change of mindset and we have probably the opportunity to discuss again about this point. Now that we're all on the same page, uh, I wanted to ask you about public reception of cloud solutions. We've been talking about the cloud for years. Do you think there is still a need to convince people that the cloud is beneficial to companies? How has the public's perception of the cloud changed over the years? Yes, I followed the trend of cloud since almost 10 years. I have seen really the progress on that. I would say that for most of the companies, it, it's not anymore a debate. There's no debate, even internally. For new companies, for startup, Clearly, it's not even an option to choose something else than going on cloud. They are very used to such models, business models of subscription. The engagement they have with all their partners are under subscription model, whether it is for software or even for any other engagement. And when we discuss with them, it's a given. For larger companies, and I guess Sebastian will tell us more about that, the question is not anymore why to go on cloud, it's more when to go. And as you said, it's a roadmap, it's a step approach. And globally, they move to cloud when everything is ready from a migration standpoint. How do they migrate the process, their training, the data? And this is the choice that they have to make. Yeah, I agree. It's more a question. But I think we can see an evolution in terms of mindset. At the beginning, we heard a lot about a move from CapEx to OPEX, a move from a large investment to more pay as you go. And it's really a way to use a very large capabilities of compute, a lot of very powerful servers without a large investment. What we can see today is that our customers want to delegate not only the maintenance of the physical server and network, but the level of delegation is much more higher. 
operating system, database, application server, cybersecurity. Progressively, they don't want to manage this layer. And they want really to be focused only on the application layer to make the, their own business. More and more, they are focusing on the availability of the application, the total cost of ownership, and the go-to-market, so the speed of to, to deploy new solutions. And more recently, they, they, they are really focused on cybersecurity. Right, so we have different perspectives from small businesses and large companies, uh, a change of mindset and companies that want to delegate. Uh, delegate is what I've heard a lot, the maintenance, for example. Security remains a concern for many clients, and you talked about cybersecurity. What if someone hacks my data? If I don't have control over where it is, then how do I know that it's safe? are things that we've heard before. What are some common myths and misconceptions about cloud and SaaS security, and how can they be debunked? I think, indeed, the, the perception on the security has, has evolved as well, and there are less concern from most of the companies because they understand that they cannot reach the same level of security than software editor would have, at least for the same investment. And for them, it's good to rely on a partner uh, when they engage again on, on a software as a service, on a partner who has a skill. When we rely on 3DS at scale or AWS, of course, it's the core at the core of their business to look at the security. And they understand that they could not afford the same level of security if they were investing themselves. And on top of that, I think the best way to answer is by being compliant with some security rules. There are rules per country, there are rules per industry, compliance rules, and as long as we are compliant with those rules, it's the best effect we can have on this perception. Yes, I agree. I think there's another point and another type of difference between cloud and SaaS. When we are considering a very classic move to cloud approach, just by moving an application located on a customer data center to a server on the cloud, it's probably not the best solution to guarantee cybersecurity. From a server inside the customer network to a server on the cloud, directly open to internet, I can easily understand why some companies are afraid about the risk of cyber attack. A lot of them, during this lift and shift approach, increase potentially the level of risk because they need to maintain by themselves every component. Again, they need to patch operating system, install firewall, and each time a vulnerability is discovered, they need to fix it when they are using application on a, on a cloud provider and a classic hyperscaler. Because it's not the work of infrastructure as a service provider to do that. At the other side, again, a complete SaaS approach allows to avoid any question of responsibility between the provider of an application, the provider of the operating system, or the provider of any other component. On a SaaS approach, the SaaS provider knows perfectly which company, comp component he is using on where and when potentially a, a vulnerability is discovered, I can fix it. And uh, we are speaking at the system about DevSecOps approach. Um, and uh, thanks to that, a SaaS provider like the system can fix every vulnerability as soon as it's discovered. I think the best proof point in terms of level of trust allowed by our SaaS solution is the fact that companies from very sensitive sectors like aerospace and defense are now more and more engaging with our SaaS uh, solution. To summarize, cloud and SaaS enable a better return on investment, better compliance with security regulations, and providers can give a greater level of security than what on-premise do on their side, right? Yeah, because they have to manage the whole chain of security aspect and the whole delivery. Again, it's about being focused on its core competencies, so providers, it's their work to do that at the heart of their, the delivery they have and the value they bring to their clients. Whereas if you delegate that to each of our clients, they will have less focus on it because it's not core product that they have to develop. So we've talked about public perception and security. Now, what trends do you see emerging in cloud and SaaS technology? If I look at it from, again, the our client's point of view, it's different usages that we have seen. Uh, now that they can focus on their product, developing their product, their innovations, we have two main evolutions in their usage. The first one is the fact that they do more and more online work, online collaboration, online engagement. 
they look at the best software to purchase online because they replicate what they are doing on their daily life outside of their professional life. And so they rely on others' recommendations to take decisions. They are more autonomous in the way they engage. So for purchasing, for training, for sharing, I would say it's there's clearly a shift to engage more and more directly online. The second trend I have observed is the capacity for our uh, users to uh, lower the computing capacity that they have on site. Typically, there are more and more of our users on Chrome, on very low-end devices, because they rely much more on cloud comp computing. They rely on the, the capacity which is on server. They tend to prevent from installing software locally uh, and run as much as possible web applications. The cloud and the infrastructure part of the cloud, the infrastructure as a service, bring that capacity to have a, a very high computation capacity on the server and lower uh, the capacity of the client side. So it's another uh, trend I have been able to observe. Yeah, on my side, I can so you see globally three different ways uh, of this on cloud deployment. So uh, first of all, uh, our worldwide usage allowing every company to increase the level of cooperation inside company and especially when they are located all over the world. So clearly, I see a better international cooperation usage so inside company, but, but also between companies, large companies and, and their partners and, and, and suppliers. The second main trend is that I see more and more questions of sovereignty and compliance. Sovereignty because companies want to process particularly critical data or intellectual property in a secure environment, immune to any extraterritorial laws, and compliance because they must respect some industrial norms like TISAX for German automotive industry or GXP for life science or healthcare companies. So they need to be compliant with those norms. So we need a DASO system help them to demonstrate that they can be compliant with all of them. And the last trend, uh, more recently, every company wants to take benefit of cross approach, including, including companies uh, managing data with the highest level of criticity, like cities, aerospace and defense industry. And that's something really new. So they need to be fully isolated, but they, don't, they want to take benefit of, of, of cloud. Globally, for, for this last uh, category, we are speaking more about dedicated cloud, fully isolated. If, if I have to summarize, in three words, trends are international, sovereign, and dedicated cloud. Vincent mentioned high-performance computing and infrastructure as a service. Could you tell us a bit more about that? What does it entail? It's something that started many years ago. In fact, the, now in our data center, we are able to grow the capacity, the power which is distributed thanks to the infrastructure as a service. And step by step, we can see that our clients, they rely a lot on that high performance computing for visualization first, because they work remotely, but more and more as well for simulation capacity. And it's something that is very useful for small and medium companies as well as startups. When they are developing a new product, a new project, they need to demonstrate that it's viable. So they usually need to demonstrate that prior to get some financial funding to really produce their products. And thanks to the high performance computing, they are able to rent, uh, to uh, subscribe on a short period of time to very high capacity and run those simulations to be able to demonstrate that to the investment fund. Yes, I think that this topic is really a very good news for a lot of companies and especially small and medium business. Part of a software as a service offering, there is more and more simulation capabilities. So in the past, mm. every company has need to invest a lot of server, HPC. The cost was really huge and it's only available for very large companies. More and more, simulation capabilities are part of software as a service solution and companies can in include the simulation capabilities on top of manufacturing or CAD capabilities. Additionally, the, the flexibility of the cloud platform allows engineers to adapt and change simulation requirements and scenarios very easily. Again, without investing a lot in terms of hardware on their side, 
uh, they can start very small uh, and grow very quick. That's really, uh, from my point of view, a, a very good news for every company, and especially they, when they can't have their own HPC. So yeah, it enables a lot of different capabilities. Uh, Sébastien, you also talked about uh, cloud sovereignty. Uh, what is sovereign cloud and how can organizations benefit from it? Uh, in fact, to process particularly sensitive data in a secure environment, and again, immune to any extraterritorial laws, more and more customers are requesting sovereign environment. They want really to protect their data in cloud, and some countries already define some standards with a high level of requirement in terms of cybersecurity and transparency regarding shareholders and data center location. So that's really a such type of topic we should consider when you're speaking about sovereign cloud. The European Union has been actively working on this topic and various other countries have introduced their own standard of our framework. At DASO system, thanks to our 3DS outscale brand, we can provide the 3 d platform on a cloud region which is fully qualified on Seclum Cloud by the French National Agency for the Security Information System, which is probably one of the highest level of requirement in all Europe and potentially in the world. If you remember well, Sébastien, uh, we were already uh, working on the cloud when the uh, Cloud Act uh, was created in the US. I think it was in uh, 2018, something like that. And it's really where this notion of sovereign cloud started to, to come in each and every discussion we had with our clients, because the cloud out, this is what you are mentioning about the laws in other countries and so many European countries, but not only, it's uh, true in Asia as well, have decided to uh, focus some of their industries on sovereign cloud. And this is this uh, strategy that we have adopted as well uh, at the so system. Mm, yes, I think that there is no more... Uh project on large engagement without discussion about uh, sovereignty, what are the sovereignty attributes. Potentially, we can see some sample uh, location of data, uh, citizenship of, of operators. That's mm. really uh, some, some topic we are discussing with every large customer. And as well in all the projects, uh, mixing private companies and public sector, whatever the industry, it's always on a sovereign cloud that we have to perform that. Agree. Well, this was a fascinating topic, and there's so much more to talk about, so you'll definitely have to come back to tell us more. Thank you again for joining us today, Sébastien and Vincent. Thank, Thank you. you. Make sure to stay tuned. Sébastien and Vincent will be joining us again in our next episode, where we'll be focusing on the benefits of cloud and SaaS solutions for startups. In the meantime, you can find more information on our website, 3ds.com cloud. Don't forget to subscribe for more insights and stories from our guest experts.